Hey everybody, it's Andy. Welcome to my weekly show where I help you build a career you love today. End of the year, we are going out with a bang. I've got a very special show for you today. Lots in store. In particular, we're gonna go over six hurdles. How to overcome six hurdles or barriers in your job search the challenges you face. And as a matter of fact, those challenges, the six that I chose that I'm gonna share with you, came from the feedback you all gave me from the 14-day job search challenge that I threw down two weeks ago. So we've got a great show in store. Don't worry if you if you don't know what that 14-day challenge is, I'm gonna show you, walk you through it, uh, recap it today. I'm also, I'm also gonna talk with you about all the feedback that I've been getting from the people I invited you to send me emails or on social media. Let me know what you're encountering, what's working, what isn't. We're gonna run over a five or six or seven points that common themes that I heard that was really positive in the way it changed people's job searches. We're gonna go over those six hurdles that were very common. Uh, one of them in particular was I can't find somebody's email address. So I'm gonna show you, I'm literally gonna demonstrate how to find virtually anybody's email address that you wanna find. So we're gonna go through that. I've also got two wonderful case studies. Uh, Heather, who started uh, the, 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 uh, the challenge less than a week ago and within a week was able to secure a new gig. I'm gonna show you what she did and the challenges she faced and I'm also gonna show you George's situation. He started about a week ago, said he has gotten more traction in the last seven days than he has the last six months. So a lot of great stuff in store. So it's really, really gonna be a lot of fun. But first, uh, well, actually, <laughs> wait, but first, first, you didn't think I was gonna forget the coffee mug challenge that I gave myself. You know, last time we did this a couple weeks ago, I had the shirt and then I bought the coffee mug. This time I had the coffee mug and I went out and we got the shirt. So I'm gonna see how long I can keep this matchy matchy thing going. I think it's kind of funny, uh, but I'm, 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 pretty, I'm pretty close today, I think. So, uh, but, but actually, all, all kidding aside, mm. but first, I do wanna start with, a, with a, an important lesson uh, that uh, I think it's a wonderful thing to talk about during this time of year, whether you're watching this live with me now at the end of the year or the beginning of, of the new year. I think it's something that's, that's very germane to what we, we do in our lives or we should be doing in our lives. It's also something that I want you to be aware of. It's another thing about you and me and our, and our connection. And it also is philosophically how I want you to look at this job search challenge and how you can channel this lesson into your perspective and how you look at this challenge as well as any other career pursuits that you have, that you have. So let's, so I wanna, I wanna, I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about that first. Uh, this time of year, at the end of the year, uh, I always do a lot of reflection. Uh, I actually, I do it at the end of every day. I do it at the end of every week, month, quarter, and I do a large exercise at the end of the year. I, I, I discovered this, um, it, it's not a new concept, but I started doing it a number of years back because I realized that no matter who you are, no matter how successful you are in whatever you do and however high you've climbed in the corporate ladder or your industry or market or community or how many people's lives you've touched or how many dollars are in your bank account, whatever your metric of success is, you will never actually feel successful unless you reflect. Um, and I've talked about this at length in some videos that I've created about how to reflect your way to success and annual reflection and a number of those out there if you want to check them out. But uh, as part of my year-end exercise, I look at all the content that I deliver to you, the topics that we talk about, the sessions that we have, and all that good stuff. And last week, I took a look at um, all the YouTube content that I've presented to you and, 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 and interacted with you. And I could not believe, uh, I don't know if you have any idea what this number might be. This is 80. I could not believe when I looked at my spreadsheet, because I keep all the stuff in spreadsheet with hot links and everything so I can get at it in some notes. 80 recorded videos for you on my YouTube channel this year. 80. This year alone. I actually didn't realize that there were that many. And how about this How about this number here? 48. This one uh, was even, a, even more surprising to me. This is the number of live shows we've had together, whether it's been like this, our live office hours, or whether it's been a live series that I've done for you on YouTube. Uh, this, that doesn't even include the live events we've had uh, on my Zoom platform or wherever else we've had them. 
And you might be wondering, well, why am I sharing this with you? Well, the, fir the first thing that I want you to know is for me, from a reflection standpoint, it shows me even more so than I thought about the interaction that I have with you, the relationship that I build with you, the things that, that while I'm teaching you, you're also teaching me. There is an immense amount that we've done together this year. If you're a new person to my channel, I want to share that with you to let you know that there's a lot of stuff that's out there that, that you can access. But more importantly than that, the when I think about it has never, ever been for me, never has been, never will be about the number of subscribers on my YouTube channel or my blog or on my email list. You are not a number. You are a person with aspirations and issues just like I am. What matters most to me is the strength of the relationship that I have with each of you as well as what we foster as a community. That's the most important thing. Now, when you think about that and you think about the challenge and you were coming up with companies that you were targeting, in the same in the same vein, it is not about the number of companies that you come up with. It is about the th it is about focusing your energy and your commitment to your pursuits. It is about the thought and the care in which you put into the research and the reach outs that you do. If you're if you are focused on that and you are developing that commitment that consistency, your confidence will rise, your momentum will rise, your results will be better. There's no other outcome possible. So it is about that discipline and consistency, week in, week out, day in, day out. If you have that dialed in, this will be dialed up for you. It really will be. And I, I saw, we got 50 or 60 emails this week from people. I don't even know how many of you actually took the challenge, but we got dozens and dozens of emails. And I saw it and I was so thrilled to see that it was having the impact that it was intended to have. This was not about racking up numbers. It was about dialing in your consistency and your commitment so that you were becoming more confident, so that every step that you took related to the challenge became easier and easier and you became more comfortable and comfortable. That's what happens. That's when the results start clicking. So good stuff. And speaking of good stuff, let's get into, let's get into this challenge. Um, for those of you, I don't know, uh, for those of you that weren't, that weren't with me, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we did a live show. I did a 14-day challenge. It was literally two weeks ago. And then uh, this past Sunday, I think it was this past Sunday, I uh, kind of cut, cut, uh, cut the video for you. It's kind of stripped down version of the same kind of stuff. Uh, it doesn't matter if you haven't, uh, haven't started, but effectively what I wanted you to do was every day for 14 days in a row, identify three companies that you could potentially, uh, could be potential employers for you, three each day. Then what I wanted you to do was find one person within each organization that you could reach out to or, or try to get to to open up a relationship. So that's three companies, one person per company, that's three additional, that's three people per day, and then one, take one step to open a relationship with that person. That could be calling a friend to get an introduction, that counts. It could be sending that person a LinkedIn in mail or direct mail. It could be emailing them directly. It could be sending them my boss hunting cover letter or all these other good assets that I've given you. Any of those things, that counts. So ultimately, what we were trying to do was come up with 42 companies over the course of the two weeks, 42 people, and 42 steps that you would take. That was about, so here again, while we're talking about numbers here, uh, really what we were looking for was trying to find some consistency in what you were doing. Now, whole bunch of you emailed me. Some of you, I loved it. Some of you were giving me daily emails. I was reading them all. I was reading them all. And some of you were giving me kind of weekend, you know, one set, one last Thursday and this Thursday. So we got, we got a whole bunch of stuff. But here's... There's about five or six things that people told me really was changing for them, that they were really discovering how much they enjoyed these aspects or this is what was happening to them. So they said, as I was alluding to a few moments ago, 
they loved the absolute discipline and consistency that they had something that they didn't need to think about each day but they were in a rhythm they knew they had to come up with the three companies and the three people and take the three steps so that consistency was making was making their lives a lot easier the other thing that i heard a ton of was it was manageable and it was intended to be manageable three companies a day is not really an awful lot of companies but some of you exceeded your goals, some of you didn't, but that's quite all right. But the manageability of it really kind of helped refocus you. I know I get a lot of emails from people that say, I'm so lost, I've been searching for so long, I'm not even sure what's wrong or where to restart or where to start. And some of you that haven't job searched ever, just because you changed jobs doesn't mean you job searched ever. Um, you know, you don't always know where to start. So the manageability in it was really, was really nice. Lottie, this one, I got a ton. You motivated me. The, uh, the word that people were using a lot was I needed the push. Think about it. Even if you didn't, if you emailed me, you know who you are. If you didn't email me, think about it. If you were engaged in this, did you do it simply because you needed the nudge? Simply because you needed the nudge. That's what a coach is supposed to do. Give you some of the tools and then give you a little nudge. And then it's up to you to take it. But I love that. I got, I mean, almost every single email that I got had that in there. This one I, this one I loved. There were quite a few people who were surprised that as they were reaching out to individuals, they were getting surprise referrals to other things. So, hey, we don't have anything at my company. I know my team isn't hiring, so on and so forth. But you know, I have a friend over at such and such a company and it looks like your background might fit, you should call her. A lot of these, a lot of these. That's what happens when you're in motion. Serendipitous stuff happens. It doesn't happen when you're not moving. So that, that one I loved. This one, uh, I talked about the happy holidays networking tactic. Because we are around the end of the year, the new year and that kind of stuff, it's, it's nice for you just to reach into people. You just reach into people, say, hey, trying to get connected around the holidays. I know I've been terrible about this. Would love to get connected. And most of the people that sent me that about the happy holidays, they were saying that almost automatically the people that were responding to them were saying, you know what, I'm so bad at this too. I am so glad you reached out. It's so nice to hear from you. Would love to get together for coffee or pick up the phone or whatever it might be. So that one that one was, was good. And then the other thing that a lot of people were doing with, and this was this was for people that were struggling with coming up with enough companies is they reverse engineered the process i don't really care how you come up with the companies so what they were doing was they were extracting their linkedin contacts and they were looking at everybody they knew and looking at where they worked and then picking off companies that way instead of targeting companies that they could think of that could use their services so i love that 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 is very that was the those were the those were the biggies uh, that we were we were coming along. So just take a moment. I, I need to take a drink of this tea because I'm sick as a dog. But <laughs> yell in the chat and let me know if those. Po okay, so I want to record it. Eleven thirteen. Let me know if 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 for those of you who did whether you're here, you emailed me, didn't email me. Was that you? Were you seeing that? Uh, or what issues were you seeing? But just give me a holler in the chat. Let me know if that if that's what you were realizing or feeling. Or could tell you were going to be feeling. Hmm. All right, let's talk about. I want to talk about what some of the issues were. All right, this one, and I'm going to kind of go in. I'm going to kind of go in order of um, uh, the sequence, not necessarily the volume of issues. Uh, it's not that 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 more people had this issue than say my third one. Um, but let's start with the company. I can't find enough companies. I live in a rural area. Um, I live in an oil and gas area. I live in a political area. I live in an automotive area. I live out in the boonies. Whatever it might be, I just, I, I don't, I don't have the skills where enough companies hire people with what I do. I got a whole bunch. I got a whole bunch. If that's you and you're wondering how to come up with more companies, I'm going to give you three tips right now, but one thing that I do want you to tuck away 
is I created a video for you. Actually, it was uh, back in January, so like 10, 11 months ago, where I created a video for you titled How to Create a Target Company List for Your Job Search. And I take you through like 12 steps. I want to give you three of my faves right now, right now, but I would encourage you to watch that. Okay, um, this is my favorite one. Think. Yes, thinking is one of my favorite things to do. Thinking is one of my favorite things to do. Just sit down with a cup of coffee or tea or a martini or a glass of wine or whatever you want, and I want you to think through all the companies that could potentially use your services. Now, let's I'm not just going to leave you there. I want to give you a little example of somebody that I work with. And I'll try to I'll try to mix up my examples here so you can kind of so I can kind of cover everybody. So, I have a one-on-one coaching client. He is a wonderful guy. He's a salesperson. He sells consumer product goods. Uh, uh, consumer product goods to retailers, distributors, and so on. So he's sold sporting goods, he's sold uh, sold hardware equipment, things of that nature, but consumable goods. So we sat down for lunch one day. He lives in in Chicago, in my town, and he said, "Okay, let's you know, let's go through." And I'm, I'm kind of struggling a little bit. I said, "Okay, let's let's bang out your list." And he was about to open his computer, and I said, "Hold on, hold on, hold on. Just keep that thing closed. The menus are still sitting here. We haven't even ordered food yet. Let's just start talking about your list." So you've worked for sporting good companies. Off the top of our heads, let's can we come up with ten or a dozen? So we start listing them out: Adidas, Nike, so on and so forth. So we come up with a bunch. Then I say, "Okay, let's talk about the hardware or equipment stores. We, you know, Ace, True Value, so on and so forth." We came up with a you know a whole bunch. Uh, and Cabela's for sporting and all this other stuff. And before you knew it, we had about 50 because then we went on to different types of consumer product goods. So we went into the categories, toys, uh, house, you know, kitchen stuff, so, you know, so on and so forth. So we, you know, clothing and so on. So then we were coming up with a bunch of companies. Hadn't even opened the computer yet. This is not even to, not even to get into Googling what are the best consumer product goods companies in the Chicagoland area. And a whole bunch of lists will come up and cranes came up and all these other lists came up. So just think about it. Try to cut it up. Cross sections are, cross sections are good. The other thing is geography. So don't be concerned so much about where you live. Now, there's, there's opportunities to relocate. That's one option. There's opportunities to work remotely. You never know until you reach into the organizations. So don't limit yourself by geography if you don't feel like you're coming up with enough good companies. I also have a video on that called How to Find a Job Out of State, but it's the same tactics even if you don't want to move that you can use. So that's, that's another one to consider. And then this is, this is a great one. This is a great one. The best and fastest growing lists. So every year, um, different entities and magazines and online outputs and all that good stuff, they put out the best of lists, like the seven small consulting, best seven small consulting firms, best healthcare consulting firms, best consumer product goods companies, and so on. The best of lists. Uh, we, I actually have a video on that. We even give you a download with like, I don't know, 50 lists that you could just start clicking for whatever is applicable to you. Those are great. The fastest growing lists. So regardless of where you live and regardless of what you do as a function, the Inc. 500, the Inc. 5000, the, the Fast 50, and so there's many, many of these types of lists. Those companies are on those lists because they're growing and because they're hiring people. So that is, this is a great one. Doesn't matter what your function is, reach into those companies that look like they are either in your market or have needs for, for your type of role, but even if they don't and they're not publicized, you got to add those companies to your list. Those are wonderful organizations to, uh, to, to, to connect with. How about this one? I can't find the person. The, the person right here, the person. Well, I asked you to find a person. We can look for the person. I'm totally cool with that. What are some things you can do there? Well, you'd be surprised at what you can find on their websites. I'm assuming that you went and looked at the website to see if there were employees on the website, testimonials, management biographies, and those kind of things. Lots of organizations want to put pictures of their people up there. It's becoming more and more common. So I know that one's obvious. LinkedIn, I'm assuming you went through and you searched like crazy for people that worked at that organization. That should have been your second step. The third step 
should have been, if it's a publicly traded organization, public reports. Look at the 10Ks, the 10Qs, the 8Qs, and so on. That's a really great one. You'll find loads of people's names and email addresses in those reports. Lots of times the executive team is in there with their contact information. It's really something that is easy to find. It's publicly accessible on a, about a bajillion different websites. Just Google it. It's easy to find. Speaking of Google, did you Google the company's name and press release and the word press release? If you, if you Google all three of those words together, lots of times they will have press releases announcing certain things. There will be people's names on there, people they hired, people that are new to the organization, people that are running big projects, people that are implementing stuff, people that are building partnerships with other companies, whatever it might be, that's another great one. And then, and then, I mentioned that some people will reverse engineering. The easiest way to find a person's name is to look for a person, not a company. So you can reverse engineer it if you need to. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't care how you come up with the companies or the or the people. Um, but this is this is another thing. So reverse engineer it. Look for the look for the person first. Okay. How about this one? Can't find the email. Got the person's name. Got the person's name. Can't find the email. So. One way you can find, not my favorite, but the first one I'm going to mention to you is go to Google, put in quotes at the at sign and the domain name dot com, net, org, whatever it might be. Google it, look through, you will find loads of stuff that's out there, even if it's generic mailboxes. It might be careers at milewalk.com. It might be a la Savita at milewalk.com. Could be a number of things, but that's one way to do it. Now, another way to do it is I want to show you, I want to give you a little demo here. Uh, bear with me here. I got a bunch of things I got to flip over. You should be seeing a, um, you should be seeing here a website called hunter.io. Kara, how are we doing? Just let me know. It looks all good. All right. So you go to hunter.io and you just type in the company name. Oh, look at that. M-I-L-E. W. And look what look what's coming up. Andrew Lasavita at Milewalk Academy. Zero results because there's no emails out for Milewalk Academy. Three results for Milewalk.com, but the companies that you guys are searching for are gonna have hundreds or thousands. You click it. Here's what comes up. Look at this. Most common pattern. F, no period there, last name at Milewalk.com. They found a something Savita, you don't need to be a rocket scientist here, at milewalk.com in 18 different places. Hey, look at that. Uh, that's because I got podcasts out there. I write for Iris. I've got, I'm on the radio. Uh, I got all kinds of stuff out there, okay? I don't know if you knew that. I write for a number of online zines. Um, okay, so now you've got it. It looks like F last first initial last name at milewalk then you go to this nifty and then kara's out there too of course she's in different sources her name appears on our website and so on the info at milewalk is out there as well um, and so on then you go over to this other site called verifyemailaddress.com or sorry dot org and you take what you think is the pattern and you're not a robot, last time I checked, and you verify. And let's see, can you see this? Let me see if I can, let me, I might have to move this for you. Uh, hang on folks, let me just move my shot. Maybe you can see that there, okay. So that says we're good to go. Looks like a valid email address. Ooh, wait, sorry. Looks like a valid email address. Now, if you guessed wrong and you said, well, I didn't really see that. Is it Andrew LaCivita? And it looks like, no, that's not it. Or Andrew LaCivita dot, no, that's not it. So this thing is pretty smart. It's pretty smart. So that's a great way uh, for you to, um, to get that, to get that. So I love that. Um, by the way, 
Uh, I, I'm not going to show you, but I want you to know there's a Google Chrome extension for Hunter.io and you could do some weird things with LinkedIn too. LinkedIn does not like it when you're getting email addresses through them using these Chrome extensions, but knock your socks off. That's a good site. It's free and you can verify it. So you're not really, you're guessing, but it's a pretty dang good guess. Okay. Now the other things about, about that is you can also... Um, you can also go to LinkedIn, give them a direct, you know, email or in mail. Uh, you also, you know, can try to get a, an intro through somebody else. But these are these are my favorite ways to do that. All right, now let's go over to. Let me see if I can get rid of that. All right, now let's go over to the another problem. Okay, got the email address. They ain't getting back to me. All right, they're not getting back. On this one, sometimes people just don't get back to you. Um, so what I would do here, it's not a great suggestion, but it's its really, I don't want you fretting this. Um, if people are not getting back to you, send them a friendly, send them a friendly reminder. Seven days later, I like to email them. Uh, the other thing is check the quality of your email. Was it enticing? If somebody's not getting back to you, uh, you didn't waste your time. You now know that that person's not going to get back to you, but what you also have is a data point for you to assess. Is that email getting a response? Is Am I getting responses when I send it into these kind of people at these kind of companies? Look for the patterns. What you're doing is you're accumulating data. So you have to look at that. Okay, here's another one. I got to the person. They said, put it in the applicant tracking system. That's great. They responded put it in the applicant tracking system. So what I would do here is I would put it in the applicant tracking system. I would email or LinkedIn mail or whatever you did that person back. I would put it back to that person. And then I would also say, hey, I, uh, I put it in uh, the applicant tracking system. Is there anybody's email address you can give me so I can follow up to make sure that they got my submission? And, and you want to try to continue the dialogue with that person that was nice enough to actually take the time to respond to you in the first place and see if there's any more information you can get out of them. You can also say, hey, if you're not sure who will be looking at this, is there a general HR or recruiting mailbox I could use? Sending an email in is a better thing. And if you do get an email, somebody's email, or you do get you know careers at you know, milewalk.com, make sure to send your resume, your cover letter in with the email and say, I connected with one of your employees. Um, I submitted my resume through your applicant tracking system. I just wanted to send it here to make sure this might be easier for you. Would love to, so on and so forth. Okay, so that's how I would handle that. And then how about this one? I got to them. I found them. I emailed them. They emailed me back and they said, we're not hiring. You're not, they're not hiring. So uh, let's not get off on a tangent here philosophically. Companies are always hiring and units are always hiring and they're always willing to trade out people, but that's for a later day. If you get back a response, number one, you should applaud yourself because somebody responded to you. That's the first goal. Second goal is they said no. Now the only thing that you can control is what you do with the no. Now I know a lot of you, like 98% of you are going to just not do anything. But what I want you to do is I want you to email the person back and say, thank you for responding. Um, I, you know, I'd really like to work with you and your organization or your organization or whatever the appropriate uh, response should be. Um, but since you're not hiring at the moment and you can see that I am searching for my next uh, employer, are there any other organizations that you know of or people you know of that I should contact who might be able to use my services or something of that nature. I don't care how you, how you phrase it. The point is you want to make sure you sling it back to them because this now was converted from a submission into a networking opportunity. So now you want to, you want to continue down the process. Now you're in networking mode. Now you're in networking mode. This works. You will be amazed at how helpful people want to be. They don't, if, if the person took the time to actually respond to you, 
That person is likely a helpful person, even if they said no. If somebody didn't respond, that's a different story, but they did respond. So if you if if I responded back to you, actually me being me, I would have thought about that in advance, but if I respond to you, you should respond back to me and say, do you know of anybody else or what, you know, point me in the direction. Any ideas? I'm always looking for help or I'd love to network with you or whatever. Happy to buy you a cup of coffee for any insight you can get. I don't care what you do, but but that that is something that you need to do to continue that. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. All right, just to, uh, I want to get into the case studies uh, because the case studies were really slick and they embody, uh, I just, I love these. They embody what it is that the challenges that we were we were facing. All right, so let's take a look. God love Heather. All right, so Heather sent me this email. Gosh, I hope you can read it. I couldn't simulate this last night, but basically, hey, Kara, let me know. Can you, can you, can you kind of read this? I know if you're watching me on your phone, this might be kind of tight. But you see some green, some blue, and some red. So Heather emailed me uh, literally, literally yet yesterday or the day before. And she said, all right, thank you so much. I'm not, by the way, I'm not going to read all this to you, but I, I do want to peel out a few points. Uh, because it, she was talking about me and that I was inspiring confidence. So let's extend that to the challenge. And basically... You got my butt in gear to just send it out. And that's the first goal. Get in motion. So that's awesome. Now, she said she hired a resume expert a while back. It didn't feel like her. This is a common tale, folks. Uh, so if you ever ask me if you should hire a resume writer, I will always say no. And that's the reason why. So she switches it. Now, I want to get into the assets of mine that are free for you that she used. She said, okay, so I took your lit. If you're not familiar with my professional resume template, Google Andrew Lasavita resume template. It's free. You can download it. Then she said, okay, I was proud of it. I could stand behind it. I used the resume and adapted the seven sentence cover letter. If you don't know what the seven sentence cover letter is, I have a video out there with how to apply when there's no job opening. And I, I give you in that video a seven sentence cover letter that you can use, that you can send anywhere. You have no excuses not to send this message to any company you want. All right. And then I have a four sentence cover letter, which is a little bit, obviously it's, it's more abridged. And it's really for those people who are just pursuing a, a role in another company, basically have the same style. I'm a salesperson. I want another sales job. I'm an accountant. I want another accounting job, that kind of thing. So she sends it out. Now on 12-6, she started this on 12-6 and I got this day before yesterday. So within five days, she sends out four resumes and fills in one online application. She gets three responses from the resume. Actually, this is an outdated email because more has happened since, but for purposes of illustration. Now, she says, they told me we have no current positions. That's the first red line. Check and get back with us. I'll tell you what she should do in that case. There was another person. He was eager to talk. They actually had the interview. This is a great, great story. And then there was a third one that said he would keep her in mind for future projects. Now, she goes on to say, well, I wanted to apply at GE, but, they, but their website says the only way to apply for a job is on the website. And then I haven't sent out more resumes because she was having one of the issues that I pointed to. Now, let's go back to this. Take the first red one, for example. We have no current positions, but keep checking back with us. Here's the opportunity now for her to immediately respond and say, okay, I love you, but since you don't have any openings, um, I'll check back in, in 30 days and 90 days and whatever. That's a long time. A lot can happen in a month. But in the meantime, do you know of anybody? And take that as an opportunity to network. Now, the second red line where it said, you keep me in mind for future projects, I would do the same thing. So that kind of that boomerang, go back, go back to the person. Now, this part about the website, it says the only way to apply for a job is through the applicant tracking system. Well, technically that's true, but I would ignore that. I would still try to find somebody and get a reference. Now, if that person that you find in the organization, she has two people that she knows, or she was able to find two names. If those people are willing to actually uh, submit her resume as an employee referral, awesome. If they are not, ask if you could use their names on your application. I'm a referral from so-and-so or such-and-such. 
That's another great way to do that. But I would totally ignore that. I would still try to go indirectly. Nobody will be offended. At the end of the day, they just want to hire the right person. And then here again on her on her last one, I haven't sent more resumes um, because it's been a challenge to find companies. I addressed that. Now, here's what she sent me actually yesterday. And boom, boom, she sends me this email and says, thanks so much. Um, I received an email response from my thank you letter after my interview yesterday. I used your template. I have a thank you template. You can go and grab it. It's free. So... Um, now what he's so excited he offered her an opportunity to work with her work with him as a project manager so she's already lined up within six days an opportunity and then just for good just for good measure just for good measure let's let's just pile on she also has an interview with where she sent her submission through the applicant tracking system uh, applicant tracking system. So look at this, the momentum. Getting in motion, committing to your pursuits makes it happen. This guy, George, I, I don't know if you're here, George, and Heather, I don't know if you're here. I know I, I emailed you both to make sure it was okay that I made you famous today. I love this. He George sent me an email. This actually was, was yesterday and uh, said, okay, I, I, I wanted to give you some notes. He started on the 3rd targeted 45 companies, found 32 people at 13 different companies. That's the green bar. So he's got 13 companies. He, he sent six emails, and of the six, he got two interviews. Two interviews. So look at the blue line underneath that. In the short amount of time, this is the most response I've received in the last six months. And once I started doing this, it became easier every time I needed the push. This is what I'm talking about you guys, if you get in motion and you commit, and you commit to the consistency, good stuff is going to happen. And I hope this, I mean, I, I, have, I have many of these. These were just wonderful illustrations. And I hope this shows you that it's nonsense that people are not hiring at the end of the year, that people are too busy, that people are taking off for the holidays and all that stuff. There are lots of demands at this time of year, so you need to be in motion in order to to do that in order to do that so i hope that helps uh, i hope you enjoyed the um actually wait let me just uh i got a little issue on my end hopefully you guys are seeing the dashboard kara i'm having to refresh my uh my live stream there we go uh i'm i'm certain i'm going to i've lost some stuff uh so I'm, i'll have to recap that so i hope that helps i'm not going to recap all that for you but i just wanted to make sure you are getting in motion. That 14-day challenge works at any moment. The purpose of the challenge is to give you some conditioning. Make sure you're committed. Your energy is focused on the right activities that lead to the, to the right results and give you the momentum and the confidence that you need. You can do it. You can do it. All right, so I hope you're loving this. If you are, click the like button on the video and, uh, and share it because now we're going to go, uh, for the next 23 minutes, we're going to go into the Q&A. Uh, one thing I want to mention, another parting gift here. Uh, I always have my interview intervention book with me on Thursdays. If you have not gotten the book, it is the $30 book is free. The $27 ebook and audiobook is free. The $27 how to interview the employer ebook is free. All I ask is you pay $7 shipping and handling. I will send this anywhere in the world. So, and Heather and George got this. So, anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, if you are watching this on the recording, I am saying so long to you. If uh, you are here with me, and I'll see you, I'll see y'all next week uh, on uh, on my on my recorded video. If uh, if you are here with me live, we're going to the questions, and so let's do it. Hey, Kara, I had to refresh, so I lost some of the chat, uh, but I have Davida with the manly mug remark at. 1103 and for any of you that are um, that are here with me that I missed in the beginning my apologies let me get video froze for a moment uh, let's see so hang on Karen is uh, Kara's mentioned to me that the video froze 
So if anybody is in front of, let's see, is it Sue? Kara is it, Kara is 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 gonna uh, gonna give me those through Slack. I will get your messages. Um, Mark Franklin is asking me if I got your message uh, following the Coachcast. Mark, I did. It's in about a queue of five thousand. I will fish it out and I will get back to you. I am. Uh, this week has been absolutely absolutely brutal for me. Um, I got back on Monday night and uh, it's been nonstop stuff. So for any of you that are emailing me that are in my programs, um, I'm, I'll, I'm doing my best. I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, but yes, I did. All right, let's see. Who, uh, 1102, is that all I missed? Davida Hay, DD was at 1101. Uh, I should know this, but can anyone tell me which font? Uh, I'm assuming that means to use when typing a resume. Uh, Danny, you are in uh, my boot camp, I believe, or I believe, and just grab the resume template. Just grab the resume template. If uh, the one that is in my program is a Garamond font, it's elegant, it it it's stylish, it's pleasing to the eye, it's pleasing to the eye, and uh, it has tested out well in the surveys. And I think the size of the font is 10 and a half on that font, or sorry, on that, with, with that font. It's a 10.5 font. And then a little bit bigger for the headings. Okay, Kara is telling me I'm caught up, thankfully. Shane, great to see you, buddy. Wilma, all you boot campers. Davida's a boot camper. Shanera, how are you? Hospitality industry and a fashion sales, wonderful. Mangesh, how are you? All right. Well, it doesn't. It, I don't know how you applied, but if you applied through the ATS, it's likely that they don't. They won't get back to you. Richard Martinez, hey to you, Mangesh. All right, here we go. However, this okay. Applied, didn't get any feedback. The same job was posted again. Should I apply it again? Yes. So, uh, if you are all of you, if you are applying, uh, and I know those of you. My dears that follow me week in and week out, you know how much I loathe putting resumes into an applicant tracking system. You have a 97% chance, even if you're qualified, of never getting seen. So if you if you end up putting your, your resume into an applicant tracking system, I want to make sure that you are also trying to target somebody in the organization, whether it's a recruiter, an HR person, the hiring official, I don't care who it is. Send your resume via email to get it into somebody's inboxes. We have entirely too many success stories of people who tried, put it in the applicant tracking system, got an automated bong message, then found somebody the next day or two, sent them their email, and they said, hey, this is a great background, come in for an interview. So that's what I would do. If, if a job resurfaced, if it was gone and then resurfaced, you go and apply again, but I would try to get directly to somebody first. That's my feedback. Hope that helps. Brooke Sachs, how are you? Another boot camper. Connie's a boot camper. I love this. All right. Bill, how are you? Of course, there are many solid color shirts and magic. <laughs> yeah, but Bill, when I take a challenge, man, we take the challenge. You should have seen the cup. I was I had the coffee mug I had in my private coaching session last night. Yeesh. Any of you guys out there, that was well, you know what I'm talking about that were there with me last night. Hey, Don, I know 40. I, I don't know. You know what? My Apple Watch says it's 39 degrees here. I haven't been out today. You guys want, don't even want to know what I had to go through to look this good and handsome to show up. <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'm looking handsome. I'm just saying you should have seen me like an hour and a half ago. Uh, thank you. Nice W. Davida, let's see, DD. Nina, you're welcome. I show up, man. I show up. I rarely get sick. Uh, but, you know, on that plane with all those coughing kids, and it just went down. All right, Wendy, great to see you, boot camper. Let me see. Kara, just make sure I don't miss anything. Heaven forbid. Greg King, how are you? Love it. Great to hear. You're welcome. Sam, I got your email. Glad you showed up. Uh, 
Gary Mandarin, how are you, my friend? Good to see you. Mary Jo, how are you? Purple's my favorite color. Good to see you last night. Let me see. Just join. Rachel, how are you? You in Germany now? Sheba, how you doing? JJ, how are you? From Portugal. I love it. Oh, Ruta. Here we go. Looks like a question. I got her at 1113. Uh... What if you try to connect on LinkedIn with people and they do not respond? So, uh, Ruta, and, and this goes for anybody in any which format you're trying to reach out to somebody, whether it's email or, uh, or LinkedIn in mails or direct LinkedIn, depending on you know what program they have inside LinkedIn. Uh, I Number one, I would not take it personally. That's the first thing. Uh, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't take it personally. Second thing is, though, you want to learn from it and you want to look at, you know, was your email enticing? What was your approach? Uh, I don't respond to a lot of people because they connect with me and then three minutes later they try to sell me something or, or you know, or something of that nature. So obviously you're not trying to sell somebody something. You're, you're, you're trying to do some networking to find your job. But uh, honestly, I would not, you know, I would look at, is there anything I can do better? Uh, maybe you need to either soften or harden the message and 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 just alter the style. And without seeing exactly what the message was, it's real difficult. Uh, you know, if there's anything you could do to articulate your approach uh, to me in here, then I'll do my best. But, you know, what what was the theme of the message? And, you know, what you know, how did you approach it? And then I might be able to offer you some additional advice. All right. Connie's telling me, yep, she... Oh, yeah, I mean... I wasn't making this stuff up. This is the stuff. And you know, and I anticipated when I gave you the challenge that that was what I was going to see. But we didn't package up this talk until we got your feet, you know, until we got the emails. And I just went solely off what you guys told me because that's what you wanted to hear uh, or that's what you you needed to solve. And that's how we came up with the agenda for today. So I I, I would imagine that that, that, that was common. Um, Keith, great to hear. Awesome. All right, Keith is asking me, just passed a telephone screen with the competitor. Yeah, I, I, knew, I knew you had that because you mentioned that last night. Roll sim up face-to-face interviews, contacting insiders uh, for interview tips. Well, uh, no, that's okay. Uh, be, just be careful with that. Um, you know, you want to just make sure that uh, you're not doing anything to lose any points by contacting those insiders, but just ask for any insight that they'd be willing to offer. Um, I don't have any extra tips beyond everything that I've taught you in the boot camp, in the interviewing, in the book, and so on, but for, related to that. And my guess is you are quite knowledgeable about the content, the products, the services, and so on, if it's a competitor of yours. And the other thing is your learning curve will be very short. And the things that I would try to take advantage of, especially in your demographic, Keith, is you want to make sure that you harp on the things that are unique to you, your experience, your level of experience, your specific domain expertise that rare few are going to have that, that, that specific. So you're going to have to, you're, you're really going to have to play that up. But that would be my suggestion for the interview. In addition to all the other tactics that I get, you really want to harp on that. All right. Henry Will. What can I watch to catch up on this challenge? I've been busy. That's okay. So, Henry, I did a live office hours uh, two weeks ago. So, it uh, would have been uh, November 29th, maybe. But if you, you look in on my YouTube channel, what I do for you guys is there's a live office hours playlist. And those are all, so like when this is done, when we're done here in, you know, a few minutes, um, we're going to, we're going to, um, it'll be recorded and, and YouTube will have it on the stream or sorry, the stream will be recorded. It'll be, it'll live for posterity on YouTube. Then there's a live office hours playlist on my, uh, on my channel. Just go to the playlist and the playlist should be in order of date. And there's something um, that we did two weeks ago on November 29th that talks about the 14-day challenge. And you could watch that. 
Uh, so that that will that will dial you. And you don't need to watch all hour and a half of the live stream or whatever because we I answered a lot of questions and stuff. But just watch the portion that talks about how to get in motion with this. I go into a lot of good stuff. There's details on how to approach it, and I think you know that's a great one. And then and then you've caught this, so maybe you re rewatch this uh, after that. So that's what I would do. And in the title. Um, I, for the life of me, I can't remember the title of what we called it, but the 14-day challenge is in the title. All right. Dan Morris, how are you? Here again, um, the boss hunting cover letter, folks, if you don't know what my boss hunting cover letter is, go on the YouTube channel. If you are not already subscribed, you should be subscribed. Uh, I always forget to tell you that, but um, which is probably why I have less subscribers, but you know what? I love you because you're here with me. Um if you just put boss hunting in the search bar, that will it will pull up the video. The boss hunting cover letters are gold. And I give you two cover letters. One if you know if there's a job opening and one if you don't know if there's a job opening. And just amend those uh, per your use. It might be it might be the most uh, effective percentage wise in getting interviews. Uh, you know, I, I love my seven sentence cover letter. That's really my fave. But the boss hunting technique is really effective. So, Dan, thanks for that shout out. I appreciate it. Dan's boot camper. We love him, and I'm glad you are you are having. And remember, it only takes one. It only takes one good one. So keep at it. Sheba, how you doing? Any videos for connecting on LinkedIn? I don't have those. Um, I don't have those. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about that in the private coaching if you'd like. And um, the other thing is um, I do have, though, uh, videos on how to get noticed on LinkedIn. So all the things that you should be doing to do that. I know that's in the paid program at a lower level of depth, but there's some also some public ones that are out there. Davida, Colorado Bulldog. Yep, beverage while engaged in deep and productive <laughs> times too. <laughs> Nina, how are you? having trouble getting a job in academia because I haven't completed my master's yet. Okay, that that will hurt. That will hurt. I'm getting automatically rejected by the ATS, but I know that I have the skills and work experience. Tips. Okay, this is a great one because this, this just not only applies to you, Nina, in academia. This applies to anybody. This applies to anybody. You know that thing on a job description that says bachelor's degree required? In most cases, it's not actually required. It's not technically required. So they put, and just because they put it out there and they say it's required doesn't mean it's actually required. It means they want it and then they have their nice to haves and all that other good stuff. Um, if I had a nickel for every time a bachelor's degree was, and I hate doing this, but required, and they hired somebody that didn't have a degree, I probably would be on a beach somewhere. So just keep in mind that when a job description, this is, and I'm speaking broadly here, when a job description is saying degree required, it's not always required. So the but go back. The best way to submit your your uh, application, your resume, is through a referral. Try to get in through the network. Now, if you submit it into the applicant tracking system and you do not have the credentials, you likely will be bonged if they've set it to not let you to not let you get through if they use it as a filtering process. It doesn't mean that they wouldn't have hired you had they interviewed you. It just means you likely wouldn't even get the interview. It's an interesting phenomenon, but it's true. Trust me, it's true. I see this often. Now, in academia, um, where I am not, I will. I want to concede that I am not as familiar, but what I would suggest is I would, here again, I would try to network your way in. I know academia, especially like even in my wife's school, my wife's a teacher, they have a very, very strict process for posting, uh, you know, teacher openings, aid openings, specialty openings, and those kind of things, administration openings. And, you know, there's a, there's a rigid process and there's a rigid interviewing process. So with um, where you are, and I don't know if it's universities or if it's, if it's even just high school or whatever it is that you're going for, uh, I would try to network and I would try to work the system and do the little end around. Now, if you are in the midst of getting your master's and it's a foregone conclusion and you have the target date and all that other good stuff, 
you know, that might be something that you can put into your resume, you know, um, undertaking master's in, so on and so forth, expected graduation or completion date is 2020 or whatever it might be. But you're going to have to work, the, you're going to have to work the system. And there's no, there's no, no two ways about that. All right. Fathia, how are you? Okay. Fresh grads with zero experience. I, by the way, just so you know, uh, I get this question a lot. It is a video that I have never created and one that I'm guessing lots of people want to know about. And, and I have created a lot of collateral for career changers who don't have the experience that are changing jobs. So I'm a business analyst and I want to be a salesperson or whatever when you're making these wholesale career changes. If you are a seasoned professional and you are interested in that, check the career changers playlist on my YouTube. If you are a uh, recent graduate, uh, if you are, and in your case, you are a graduate, so you want to rely on your resume and your degree and whatever summer jobs or internships or volunteer work or school projects or school committees or whatever it might be that you did. The first place I would point you to is I have a video uh, on YouTube called This One Trick Will Make Your Co College Resume Stand Out. I would highly recommend that you package your resume that way. That way. We have college students that are in the Milwaukee Academy they say they wrestle with their career, um, I, don't know, I don't know what they, they're called, the placement offices uh, in the universities because they want to keep moving the education to the top and all that good stuff. And every single one of these people say, nope, we use your format, we get results, we use the, their format, we don't. So trust me, it's a, it's a great way to package your experience. It'll make you shine from a cover letter standpoint. Use the templates that I have out there for professionals and substitute your accomplishments while a professional is talking about the accomplishments that he or she has achieved in their work experience, you need to talk about your, uh, your accomplishments that you've achieved in your school projects, in your volunteer. So it, don't worry that it was a volunteer program or that it was a school committee or it was a major school project or whatever. Uh, to the extent that you can pull in any uh, experience from your summer jobs or your internships or all that good stuff, that's awesome. That's even better. But I would use the same template and just substitute your projects, your volunteer work, or whatever else you did. But that, believe me, that will that will help you. That will help you. Jose. Jose, this is a great question. Uh, he's asking, what strategy would you suggest to find remote jobs for people that do not live in the U.S.? And Jose, the video that I mentioned while I was in the teaching portion of this of how to get a job out of state, use it. There's nine tactics. Just watch that video. It's 10 minutes. It's nine. I run you through them, and it doesn't matter if you're looking for a job. Technically, it really doesn't matter if you're looking for a job down the block in the next town over, the next state, the next country. It doesn't make any difference. Um, all of what I put in those nine steps, they apply. Check that out. Sadistically Sharp, how are you? All right. What is the best way to answer what value do you have to offer? Do you know if you're doing, don't know if you're doing questions, but thanks, Andy. Okay. All right. Now, Sadistically Sharp, if you get this book, if you don't, if you have it, um, on page, wait, you'll love this, on page 48, can you guys see this? What does this say? What value do you offer? See this? I tell you exactly why it's asked, variations of it, what they're looking for, and the very best response. Folks, when you get this, you get the ebook right now. In right now, if you click the link and you go and you get the free book and you pay the seven dollars shipping and handling, you get the ebook and the audio book. So go get that. I love that. I love that I flip right to the page. Um, actually, what page? What page was it? Here, wait. I can get it right back. Page forty-eight. Page forty-eight. Page forty-nine. How will you benefit from joining our company? 
Page 50, what does the first act you'll perform when you start? I mean, this goes, it's really, it's really good. I got the 14 best ones and 43 variations. Go get it, page 48. All right. Sam, how are you? Funny story. Happened to meet an HR rep at an RV trailer factory who was about to interview somebody. I asked what questions she used. She recommended interview intervention. Shut up. Oh, you recommend, wait, I asked what questions she used and recommended interview intervention. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you for that, my friend. I love that. Cecilia, how are you? You got a job. Awesome. A returnship. That's a new word on me, which is like an internship for people who have been on a career. Oh my God. Kara, can you, can you, we, we, we gotta, we gotta capture that. I gotta do something with that word. <laughs> Oh my God. Cecilia is a beloved member of our, our programs and our boot camp and our community, and I love that. Hey, Mom. How are you? Glad to see you. Hope Dad's doing good too. All right. Heather, that. Oh, Heather's there. Hey, Heather, man, I love that story. Thank you for sending me that and all the updates. That's just awesome. Um, Enam, um, this is a, and, and I, I, I get this. And by the way, folks, um, wait, it's not freeze. Okay. Uh, I get there are different cultures and, and customs in, in different, um, countries and in, in the U S um, and I mean, and I have a very international office, actually statistically 38% of you on here are outside the U S. So, um, so I get that there are different cultures and customs. Uh, if if you are not able to get information about the employees, then what I would do is I would use a more generic approach. Uh, I would I would go watch the no job opening, uh, how to apply when there's no job opening. Use that cover letter. Uh, you can use the four sentence cover letter, the seven sentence cover letter, wh- however you want, and then you're just going in a more generic route. But what I would try to do is I would try to submit your resume, your application, your emails, whatever to somebody in the email format. So here again, I mean, my, my suggestions are the same. You just might not be sending it to a specific person and you would be addressing it to, you know, dear, dear hiring team or something of that nature. So I hope that helps. Shane Cook. So how about that, folks? Shane says he's experiencing good success with the challenge. He front end loaded and hit 25 targets over the first three days. He's such an overachiever, uh, which led to 15 initial discussions, screens, and eight follow ons. Get in motion. And like George said, it keeps, it keeps getting easier. You will be unafraid. You will be, un- you know, the first time I turned the camera on and I had to sit here. Well, now we're like a hundred shows later. It gets easier. It's the same thing with email and companies. So actually, I wasn't sitting here the first time. I was in my condo uh, before my wife made me buy this house. (laughs) All right. That's awesome. Missy, good to see you. Thank you for the email. I know it's in there somewhere and I didn't get a chance to read it, but I will read it in a little while. If you have no contact in an org, should you write the HR person first or someone in the department? So, okay, wait. I, I'm i okay with either. However, here's what I would say. Generally speaking, the people in the position, the hiring official, they're in more pain. They're in more pain. And there's two things about a hiring official. There's two things... Oops, sorry. There's two things about a hiring official. The hiring official is probably in more pain, and if there's an open posting, they're going to be more responsive. They're going to want to get you going. They're going to say to the HR person, get her going. If there is no opening and you send it to the HR person, the HR person is going to say, if he or she even responds, there's no opening. The hiring official will look at you and say, hmm, we got three people on our team and I don't like this one. She ain't pulling her weight. 
Let's let's talk to Missy. Okay, that happens, and you got a better chance for that to happen. So if it's me, I go to the hirer first. I might go with the boss hunting technique or some variation of that. You have all that as a boot camper, um, but that that to me is the route to go. If you can't get to the hirer or you can't figure out the hirer or whatever, but you can get to the HR person, that's fine too. But I, I think your odds are increased. I would love to say I know what those odds are. I don't, but I know they're better. I know they're better. So that's what I would do. Kimberly, Michelle, I love that. And it did, I love your name. It did freeze because I had to refresh mine too. All right, let me see where I am. All right, I can go a few more minutes, folks, and then I have to race off to an interview. Dom Martinez, um, you can get the book for free in the description of this uh, live stream. And the other thing is, Kara might have dropped it in the in the chat. Andres. All right, I submitted my CV. Most of my experiences. Oh, okay, you, then you should use a CV. A good call from the CEO saying he called me because I uh, because because of a specific line on my CV. That's awesome, buddy. Lots of luck. I, I don't know if there's. Oh, wait. Here's a question. He explained to me everything on the project and sent me the info. I sent him your follow up email. Okay, great. And received more info about the project. What should I do? Um, I'm not. I'm assuming that you are going to interview him or interview with him. At this juncture, if I'm reading you correctly, I would send him a message back and say, hey, this looks great. Um, you know, would you, I mean, and I'm assuming you had a phone call. Uh, so I, it's time to set up that interview. But what I would do, okay, so, so step one, get the interview and get in there face to face. Step two, if you have information about the project, you should think about how you would operate that project. So make some notes or a story about what specifically you would do to implement that project. You, you, that's gold. There is no better way to interview. Uh, I mean, unless you have like you're a consultant on a project and they can observe you for 30, 60, 90 days or whatever and then hire you. That's the ultimate because they could see in action. The second best way is by talking about how you will perform this project, what you will do step by step and so on. So that, that to me is really great. So I would make sure I had my plans in place and I had all, you know, I had the approach and I had a plan, a listing of the inventory, the steps you'd take, how you would research it or whatever you would do. But that's what I would do. Uh, Danny, uh, font and pitch of resume for ATS. The plainer the text, the better. So I gave you the font and all that good stuff, use the template and keep it text-like. No graphics, no symbols, no hieroglyphics, no craziness, no tables. All right, I got, oh, Mike Lowry. How you doing, man? I hope you're doing well. I love that you are in a great place and, and got, a great, uh, got a great job. All right, folks, I need to run. I want to tell you just one, a couple other things. This is the last live office hours of the year. Uh, if you are, I'm not going to go through any major sales pitch. We have one session next Wednesday for the boot campers. It is a bonus session for my boot campers. If you are enrolled in the boot camp or want to enroll in the boot camp, we have a session December 19th on what to do right now this to take advantage, to keep in motion. It's not about the challenge. It's about different tactics. And then in January, we have a live round, five sessions of the boot camp. It's already recorded. You could watch it all right now. You can binge watch. People have been buying it all week. It's crazy. I mean, we got a lot of new members this week. You can watch it all. We've got live instruction in January. And then in February, so if you, if you enroll now, in February, you will also be able to come to a new program that I'm created. It's a $400 program, but you get it for free. It's my career accelerator program. It's everything to accelerate your career, whether you're staying in your current job or you're getting a new job the first 90 days, um, how to prepare for the promotion, 
all the good uh, leadership stuff, how to make sure that you're ready for your uh, annual reviews, quarterly reviews, all that good stuff. Everything is dialed in and I'm gonna teach all of that live in February. So this package of the bootcamp, all that stuff is free. So check out the bootcamp overview page and if you, if you send me an email, um, the, the base package is $600. If you send me an email to support at milewalk.com, I'll, I'll knock $100 off for you. So that'll be $500. And you can have the boot camp, the all access pass to the Mile Walk Academy, and the Career Accelerator program, the four, extra $400. All that's $500 now. And then, but the other two options, if you want coaching sessions with me or resume reviews and all that other stuff, is, is $500 each. So it's $1,000 or $1,500. So, um, it, but just email me at support at malwalk.com. We'll create a personal coupon or coupon for you. So I hope uh, hope you jump in. I will not be here on the 20th or the 27th, but we will be back up and running in January with some special stuff. I promise. I promise. But if you are interested in the boot camp, let us know. And I continue to invite you to send me your emails on the challenge. I love that stuff, love it. I love hearing from you. I wanna know how it's going. I wanna know what's working and what's not. And if something's not working, I'll, I should be able to point you to how to overcome those hurdles. So I hope you enjoyed today. I will miss you all for the next two weeks. Have a Merry Christmas or whatever it is that you celebrate. Happy holidays and a Happy New Year. And I will see you soon. Take care.